Okay, today we're going to paint some wood grain onto an MDF panel. I'm going to start off by sealing the panel with some button polish. Button polish is quite a good sealer because it seals in fireproofing salts and it dries quite quickly. You might get some materials that you build scenery out of, like class 1 plywood with fireproofing built into it or soaked into the surface of the board. And if you don't seal it in properly, it can spoil your paint finish, especially if it's a dark colour, um, a dark coloured paint finish. The, the salts come through and create white patches. So button polish is a good material for the job. If you don't have the money for button polish, if you're on a restricted budget and you're not using class one materials for some reason, you could use PVA watered down as a sealant. It doesn't dry quite as, quite as quickly, so it might hold you up. It is a lot cheaper though. Okay, that's fine. Right, now we've sealed the MDF, I'm gonna prime it. I'm using emulsion paint, tinted with some Roscoe supersaturated scenic paint. Used, um, well you can have a look at the data sheets to see what colors I used. Um, I'm putting this on with a rag roller, just, so, just for speed, but I don't know if you can see, it's leaving a sort of an orange peely kind of texture. Uh, not very good for, for wood graining, because we want it um, a nice flat surface. So what I'm going to do basically is lay off all of these marks with a purdy, which is a, a, a brush made by purdy. Very good quality nylon brushes. Okay, that's nice and even. This is a purdy brush. So just go over the surface, laying off all the marks in the same direction. Okay, so we've button polished the board, we've base coated it, now we're going to seal the base coat. The reason for doing that is so that we have a nice long open time when we put the graining coat on. The open time is the, is the, the length of time that the graining coat or any other coat remains workable. So it's a phrase that's given to the length of time you can work a layer in, in a painting process. And we don't want that graining coat to dry too quickly. Now I'm putting this on this is emulsion glaze. I'm not using shellac this time. I don't want to put too many layers of shellac into um, the paint process. I'll explain why a bit later. Now I've put this on a little bit thick, so I'm going to clean the brush off and then do it again. So before we put the graining coat on, I'm just going to dampen that surface with a bit of water and a car sponge. This again is just to give us that little bit more open time. I don't want the graining coat to be absorbed into the base coat before we've had a chance to work it. Okay, oh, I might have done that. Put a bit too much on there. Let's take a bit off. make it too wet, just make a mess. Right, let's see. I'm going to put this on with a rag roller, but I'm then going to lay it off with a purdy. Oh, I have got it a bit wet. Dear, oh dear. Let's give it a try anyway. The colour that I'm putting on, the colour that I'm putting on is uh, a varnish stain, a water-based varnish stain. It's the kind of stuff that you can buy from DIY shops. You could use um, some Roscoe supersaturated paint with some emulsion glaze. Just being lazy, this stuff is made up ready. The, the great advantage with this, of course, is if you've got a big area to do, you can go and buy some more of the same colour, you can get a colour match. Now, put it on with a rad roller, I'm laying it off as ever with a purdy, 
Actually, this isn't too wet, it's about right. I'm not going to worry too much about this, it's just to get rid of any blotchiness before we start graining. Right, you see these two tools I've got to, to the side of the sample here. This is a rocker and I'm going to put the heart grain on. Notice I've got even pressure across the back of the tool and I'm dragging it towards me very smoothly, rocking it slowly as I go. Now. That was quite a coarse grained rocker, so it's made quite wide marks. I'm going to use the wide part of the comb to pick up on those marks and carry on the grain. Again, putting pressure evenly across the back of the tool so all of it makes a mark. Now, I'm going to have to use the tool upside down because I can't get round the other side of the sample because of the camera. Really, you'd want to come round the other side and use the tool the right way up. Still, it's just about working, it's okay. You notice I'm making sure that I'm using the comb the right way around each time so that the narrow grain follows narrow grain and vice versa. If you do it like that, it all looks like one piece of wood. Whoops, it's caught the edge of the board there. Now, of course, you could make this look as if it were made of several planks by drawing a couple of registration lines on there to start with and then masking off a board and doing that. And then when it's dry, masking off the bit that you've done and going again. I haven't explained that very well, but you know what I mean. Right, now, I've got the grain on there. It doesn't look that exciting. It looks a bit artificial, a bit sort of um, doll's house, if you like. I've got to make it softer. And we're going to use this tool. It's called a flogger. I'm just going to, I've got my hand on top of the tool. I've got the, the, the brush very low down on the work. And I'm just striking it every centimeter or so, moving in one direction. You can see how it's just kind of blurring the mark. Making it much more realistic. Once you've flogged it, there's much less contrast in the, in the grain. There's another tool that scenic artists use called a flogger, but that's for making drawing out of mistakes out of drawing in a in a back cloth. It's a completely different thing. We'll come to that in another film. Right, so we've got the graining coat on. Um, it's looking a bit flat and a bit light and not very interesting. So we're going to add some more tone to it, darken it down um, and make it look a bit more sort of layered and sophisticated as it were. I'm going to use Van Dyke solution which is a material made from walnut husks um, made up into a dye and fixed with some glaze. I'm just going to paint it on. Could have put this in with a roller actually. Should have done, but in fact, let's whack it on with the roller. Quicker you get it on, less chance there is of it going wrong. You 
can see that the graining marks that we put underneath, as soon as you flog it, they come up clear again. So you haven't lost anything. You've just gained a load of depth and tone. So the Van Dyke stain has helped a lot, it's dropped it down, uh, made it look much less artificial, more realistic. But it's dried quite flat, not very interesting. We now need to varnish it, and I'm going to use shellac again to varnish it. This is a, a different kind of shellac, it's called garnet polish. Um, I'm going to put it on with a rad roller and lay it off with a purdy. I don't want to mess around with it too long, because as you remember, I sealed the board initially with shellac. One of the problems with using it, that was button polish, uh, one of the problems with using it is that once it's dry, you can reactivate it, you can kind of dissolve the shellac by putting more shellac over the top. Well, we've got several layers of paint in between, so it should be fine. But if you messed around with it too long, you could dissolve the original layer of shellac and even some of the emulsion paint. Um, so it's put it on, lay it off with a brush, don't mess about with it. So let's go. Get it on with a rag roller because that gets it on nice and quickly. You can see straight away that it adds a load of depth and tone. Get rid of any dribbles, splodges. Just going to put a nice surface on it with the purdy. Standing on a squeaky board here. And there we are, the finished job. <laughs>